who's joining us on YouTube. Um, thanks for thanks for coming to Impact Online. Uh, we've never done anything like this before, which we're excited about. Um, right now, it looks like it's just me in a dark room, uh, which is only partly true. Um, Jonathan is here and Jason as well. Um, so for those of you on YouTube, you found us. Congratulations. If you're watching on uh, Instagram Live, um, hey, give us a wave. Um, you probably heard already, um, but I want to just give a quick reminder as well that this Sunday, all of our services are going to be online. So we're going to have a live worship experience online at 9 a.m. Um, so you can find it at the same link that you're on now, live.kcf.org. Uh, and we can still be the church um, through the internet because we are humans filled with the love and presence of Jesus. So we're still going to meet um, if you are feeling healthy and excited about it, go and watch the service with some friends, with your family. Um, we're looking forward to, it's still going to be an amazing weekend. And even though we can't be together in person, um, we're still going to be together online. Aren't you thankful for the technology and the, um, and the fact that we can like still be connected together, even though we're not together? I'm, I'm really thankful. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes tonight. Um, we had a, a service planned, and we're now just here on the internet. So, big old change of plans. Yeah, a big change of plans, but I, I love the fact that Jesus knew that this change of plan was coming, um, and he's here with us, and I do believe that what we're going to talk about tonight um, is something that the Holy Spirit wants to share with you. Um, it's not something that I'm making up or just think would be a good idea to talk about. I am convicted that and convinced that um, the Holy Spirit has something to share with you tonight. And so even though we're not in a, um, you know, we're not in the impact center, we're not in a room uh, with fancy lights and, you know, a see-through pulpit, and I don't have my paper Bible, um, I still... I'm confident that the Holy Spirit has truth and love and hope that he wants to speak to your heart tonight um, while we hang out. So, yeah, if you, again, like I said, if you have questions um, or, you know, if you want to um, interact in any way, uh, you can just shoot a quick message on Instagram Live and I'll see those roll in and kind of respond as we can. So, um, here we go. The, the, let me take a drink first. I mean, I don't know who I'm waiting for because it's so weird not having people in front of me. Okay, so uh, a couple weeks ago when we were planning as an impact team, um, we really wanted to talk about and address this, this question and this thought. My friend is struggling with their mental health. What do I do? And all of us have been there before. Um, if you are somebody who struggles with your mental health, um, you know what I'm talking about. If you have anybody in your family or close friends, um, you have had people that you know are struggling with their mental health. It's something that all of us go through at some point or another, or if you haven't struggled yourself, you know people who are. And it's such a, it's such a big thing right now in our world is the awareness around our mental health. So tonight, what we're going to do amongst responding to the other things going on in our world is talk about this question. Um, my friend is struggling with their mental health. What do I do? Now, obviously, because we're, we're there, there's a reason we're not sitting in the impact center, um, the coronavirus and everything surrounding that has been uh, incredibly, um, it, it's, it's just been wild to watch how this unfolded. Um, to watch the our, the state of you know our world change so drastically, changing by the hour even today, um, as we watch you know things like the NBA cancel. I mean, you guys as students aren't going to be at school for another three weeks. Some of you are like, "This is the best ever," um, and you know it's it's just it's crazy. It's different, and there's also I I know many of us who are feeling. Um, uncomfortable, feeling maybe worried or scared because, you know, this is all changing. We can't meet uh, in person. Um, you know, I can't watch hockey on TV anymore. There's lots of things that are are changing, and the world is clearly 
um, responding to this virus. And as, as much as the virus spreads, I think um, what is spreading faster and farther is an incredible amount of fear. And this fear is something that, that affects our mind, it affects our mental health, it affects um, our physical health. And so tonight, I, just w- I want to take some time to talk about this um, and talk about how, as followers of Jesus, um, how should we be responding? How can we respond um, when we're afraid? Now, I'm not like a professional health person, um, so I rely on professional health people to help inform my decisions. And yesterday, I, I took some time to scroll through Instagram and, you know, just to hop on whatever news website I could and look and and read some things that were going on. And honestly, it, it made me afraid. Like, I'm going to be honest, I was really uncomfortable by what I was reading, um, what, what I saw, and it made me, it made me um, uncomfortable. It made me worried. And so I had to ask myself how I was going to respond. And there were some things that um, I could, I, like, I could just pretend that nothing's wrong. But obviously, that is a, a silly way to respond. Um, I really want to respond um, in faith, but also God has given us... Um, serious wisdom. He's given our national leaders wisdom. He's given doctors wisdom to know how we should respond, how we can keep each other safe, um, and how we can respond and make smart decisions. And I believe that God has placed that wisdom in those people to help us. And so that's where I want to look to. Instead of looking to my social feed, you know, for for news and, and to know how to respond, I want to look to the people that God's given wisdom to, to help discern and help me make my decisions. Just because we're living by faith, though, doesn't mean um, we ignore facts and ignore what is going on around us. But as followers of Jesus, we, amongst the confusion, amongst the fear um, that spreads around online and, and through our friends at school, um, we can respond with faith and with confidence. And so I want to talk about that tonight. And I know that all of this stuff with the coronavirus and the things that have been closed and um, things that have been canceled do bring up a lot of fear in us. And that is really is a part of our mental health journey and, and how we and how we work through it is really important. There's so many of us who have had mental struggles and, and have struggled with our mental health. And I think that at church and especially at Impact, we want to be able to talk about it. We want to be able to talk about the coronavirus as it comes up and the things that um, bring fear in our hearts. We want to be able to talk about these struggles together. We want to be able to bring them to Jesus, to hold the struggles up to the truth of God's word um, so that we can experience the life that Jesus has for us. You know, we could, I, I, I could get into lots of stats and different things, which um, I, don't, I don't need to get into stats for you guys to know that um, there are so many of us who struggle with our mental health. And so that's why I want to address this question. I'm stru- my friend is struggling with their mental health. Um, what do I do? Recently, um, I went to, I went to a uh, talk by a guy named Brett Ullman. And you may have heard of him. He's a Canadian um, speaker who travels and writes books and blogs. And he speaks to high school students. Um, and he speaks in high schools about the importance of our mental health. And he has a, he has a website, Brett Ullman. Dot com, and there he's got a ton of incredible resources, books, blogs, um, videos that he wrote, that I would recommend you check out um, as for, for parents and for students as we all navigate the health of our mind. Um, but in his talk, he he kind of divides up the experiences that we can have as we as we work through this journey of mental health into three um, kind of buckets or three kind of sections. Um, so he separates where we experience struggles in our mental health into three sections, into our, our, uh, our body, our mind, and our soul. And these three things are all areas that we can, they're, they're obviously all encompassing, um, but they're also areas that we can look at and specifically address what's going on in one area, and that will affect what's going on in another area. So when I was really struggling with my mental health, the, one of the things that started that was a red flag for me was the health of my physical body. So in the past, when I've struggled with depression and struggled with anxiety and surrounding, 
you know, how um, surrounding my my work and the expectations that I put on myself to to do a good job, to carry the weight, to remember all the details. And that, that's a whole story on its own. But a lot of the things that piled up for me began. The first thing that um, started to be affected was my physical health. I would come home from work frustrated and and bummed out. And what I would do is I would I would eat a bag of chips and then I would go to sleep at like 5 p.m. And and then I would wake up at like eight and forget what day it was and forget what world I lived in. And I didn't have great eating habits. I didn't have great sleeping habits. And so my physical body began to deteriorate. I was exhausted all the time. Um, I would sometimes skip my lunch break at work because I wanted to remember all the details. I wanted to get everything done. And obviously that is not healthy for your physical body. And so that was one of the first things for me that started to, um, that started to like deteriorate to, to become unhealthy. And these three buckets are so interesting, our body, our mind, and our soul, because they're all connected. So as soon as my body began to be exhausted, began to deteriorate, began to, um, I, I didn't take good care of it. As soon as that happened, my mind that's connected to my body began to experience some weird things as well. I began to have frustrating thoughts that, oh man, like I'm never going to get out of this situation at work. Um, I began to worry, you know, I would, I would wake up at three in the morning, like, you know, like sweating and I'd be like, ah, I didn't set the tables up today. Like we, we got to set the tables up. And, and I was so, so caught up in my mind and I began to develop not only unhealthy, unhealthy physical patterns, but unhealthy mental patterns as well. And when our, when our body's not functioning properly, our mind can't function properly as well. And so to address these things that, and, and maybe you, um, maybe as you think about your own experience with your mental health, you're seeing, oh man, yeah, there are some things that are going on physically in my body that are, that really aren't that, that I could, t that I could take better care of like sleeping habits. Hello. That's a huge one. How many hours of sleep do you get in a night? I can guarantee that if you begin to sleep more hours in a night, your mind will feel feel clearer and healthier. Do you eat chips for dinner? That was my diet for a while. Uh, not a healthy diet. My, my body didn't respond well to um, Tostitos and uh, Ruffles and hell of a good dip. It tastes delicious, but for dinner, it's not good. These things we can begin to work on on our physical body. And when we keep our physical body healthy, um, it helps keep our mind healthy as well. They are connected. Uh, Something that if you, so if you're experiencing, you know, issues and um, having trouble taking care of your physical body, like go see your family doctor. Like that's why we have one for them to help us be healthy and they can help um, help you ensure that you're doing things to keep your body healthy and keeping your body healthy is a huge part as we um, work on our mental health. I was talking about our, our mind and and as we look at this, this thing called our brain, you know, we keep learning new things about it and, and science and different things. And um, your body is connected to your mind. And so when your mind begins to become unhealthy, we develop these, these, these thought patterns um, that are consistent. Our brain wants us to have these patterns in our mind. And when we have unhealthy ones, it becomes the natural track that our brain falls into. So when I was really struggling with my mental health, my thought patterns were not in a good place. Um, I began, I, I was worried. I was worried about every little thing. Um, a way that we can help address what's going on in our mind is first, um, to talk with our, our family and leaders in our life that can help us process what we're dealing with because our emotions, God gave us our emotions as a gift. Um, but our emotions are not supposed to be in charge of us. Our feelings are not supposed to be in charge of us. And sometimes it is really difficult to manage that. It, ca it can be so hard to manage the thoughts that go on in our mind. And so we have parents, we have leaders, um, we have also counselors and therapists that can help us as we process the things that go on in our mind. So through my journey of mental health, when my, my physical body was not healthy, my mind became unhealthy, my emotions began to um, come out of control and I couldn't process and that began um, to spill over into my soul and, and my soul wasn't healthy. I, one of the things that 
I, was so hard for me that was so different when I was struggling with my mental health was being able to pray and communicate with God. That's something that as a follower of Jesus is essential to our lives. And, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it when I was so frustrated with work. So, um, concerned with the details and the things that I had to focus on. I, I, I began to lose hope that my situation could be different. And so when I would pray and I'd say, God, like you got it, you got to give me hope. I need your help in this moment. I need your help to get through this work day. And I felt like God wasn't there. I felt like I couldn't hear him. And so when I couldn't hear him, I just assumed that he couldn't hear me. And I wonder if there are some of you watching tonight that feel that way. Maybe as we, as you keep reading the news and you keep reading, um, you know, another case is going on here or, you know, school is closed. These different things are happening and are being affected by this virus. I imagine there's some of us that feel like, okay, God, like, do you hear me? Do you hear, do you see what's, what's going on in our world? Do you see what's going on in, in my own heart, in my own mind? And I found myself in that spot of God, like, where are you? And it was because my soul was unhealthy. God, God didn't go anywhere, but my soul wasn't healthy enough um, to be in a place where I could hear God's voice. And so uh, I, I remember, um, I remember praying often and just being frustrated by it. And so if you're in that place, I want to encourage you to talk to somebody that you trust who can hear God's voice for you. Now, people can't speak on behalf of God. That's, that's not how God rolls. But what, what is and was really helpful for me was to have somebody who I knew loved me who could um, remind me of the truth of God's word. When my faith was low, I had to allow the faith of somebody else to carry me. And so if you are watching tonight and, and you are experiencing this fear and you're like, man, my soul is not in a healthy place. I, don't, I, I feel like I can't hear God and it feels like he can't hear me then I would encourage you to find somebody who can, somebody who you know loves you, to then begin to carry you um, back to God, to back into his presence, because they will speak truth over your life. The word of God, the Bible, is another thing that helps keep our, keep our soul healthy. The Bible is full of incredible verses that speak truth, um, but I would encourage you to know the whole story. <laughs> there's, some, there's some verses that we love to put on our fridge, but we don't put the whole story on our fridge, and so sometimes that, that can change the meaning of the story. One of the ones that I love so much that um, is a favorite verse of mine that sometimes I forget to add the story to is, um, you, you probably heard it, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Great verse. Um, I've seen it on, you know, in a locker room. I've seen it on running shoes. Uh, I, everywhere. But what always challenges me is Paul was in prison when he wrote that verse. And I wonder if he was feeling like he could do all things. <laughs> you know, so, so that's what I mean. You got to know the whole story of what you're reading. But the truth of God's word, the power that it communicates to our hearts when we keep it down deep in our soul um, is, is so foundational. So we can, as we address these ideas of... Um, struggling with our mental health, we can look at it in those three buckets, our body, our mind, and our soul. And there's lots of ways that we can keep all three healthy. And I could keep talking about it, um, but I want to keep moving. When it comes down to it, our relationship with Jesus is the foundation as we struggle with our mental health. And really, all the time. Our relationship with Jesus is the foundation of, of our lives, as, even as we go through this this pandemic of the coronavirus. Our foundation um, is our relationship with Jesus. And the best thing about that is that Jesus doesn't have to only use magical spiritual moments in an auditorium to speak to you in your life. Jesus can speak to you through the wisdom and discernment of, of wise people in your life. He can speak to you through doctors, through counselors, through your friends. He can speak to you through the wisdom of his word. Your relationship with Jesus is going to be the foundation for you as you walk through your journey with mental health and as, as a community as we walk through this journey um, with the coronavirus. I wish that I could just give you a special formula that would make everything better. Like, I wish that I could, you know, just sprinkle something on your forehead and, and your mental struggles would go away. I, when I was really struggling 
that was all I wanted was something to just like fix the problem for me in the moment. And I haven't figured it out yet. The essential oils people, they haven't figured it out yet either. Okay. Um, but one thing that I do know that makes all of the difference in the world is the love of Jesus. And that phrase, the love of Jesus is, it, we hear it all the time when, when we're church people. And so sometimes that takes away some of the power of it. The love of Jesus completely changes whatever space it occupies. It drastically alters whatever is going on around it. So when I was struggling and I couldn't hear God's voice, I had to allow people around me who loved me um, to remind me of the love of Jesus. So if you are struggling with your mental health, if you're struggling with fear as we navigate this, this coronavirus, I want to remind you that you are going to experience the love of Jesus most powerfully and in a really powerful way from the people around you, the followers of Jesus around you. Sometimes, sometimes as, as people who, who are a part of church, we, we limit God's power to like these miraculous moments. And I'm guilty of it. I, I mean, my dad was a pastor for my whole life. I knew about miraculous moments. Um, we talked about them at the breakfast table. We talked about them you know, when we're going out for dinner, we talked about the when I'm learning to tie my shoes. Like it, it was, it was, an, it was always understanding that God could do supernatural things has always been a part of my framework. But what happened along the way is I began to limit what God could do only to supernatural things because it was exciting. It sounds cool. It's powerful. Do you know what I mean? Normally, there's students who then go, "Oh yeah, we know what you mean." Um. But anyways, here we are. Sometimes we limit God's love to supernatural moments. And I want to challenge you tonight that God might actually want you to experience a supernatural moment through a follower of Jesus who's sitting right next to you as you watch. Through a follower of Jesus who lives in the same house as you. Like, I believe that God fills us with his presence so that we can share that so others can experience it. So let's go back to the, the, the key focus of our evening, our evening. What, am I a hundred years old? <laughs> let's go back to the focus of what we're doing here tonight. We're asking the question, my friend is struggling with our men, with their mental health. What do I do? And the simple answer is this. We, we love them. We love them. We show them the unconditional love of Jesus. I, I have a tendency to, when somebody comes to me with um, and shares something with that they're struggling with, I just want to fix it. And with mental health, it doesn't work that way. When you struggle with something in your mind, um, it, uh, like, I can't fix it for you. There's people who are professionally trained to help you, and so you need to let them help you navigate how to, to get healed and how to navigate what's going on in your mind. But I can't do that for you. My, my primary job as a follower of Jesus is to, to communicate to you that you are unconditionally loved in whatever interaction we have. So if you are struggling with your mental health tonight and you would put yourself in that, in that category, then, then hold tight because for the next minute or two, I want to speak to those of us who, who right now are not struggling with our mental health. A verse that always, I mean, a whole book of the Bible that always challenges me is John. Man, what, so many amazing things in John. Um, and I want to read just a quick couple verses that Jesus is communicating to his disciples that I think should challenge all of us. So Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says this, John uh, on chapter 15, uh, starting verse 9. And he says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you now. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, excuse me, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this love each other as I have loved you. And we repeat that often, and sometimes we confuse it with the phrase, you know, love others the way that you want to be loved. Um, but I want to challenge you to actually love others the way that Jesus has loved you. And that raises the stakes a thousand times more, doesn't it? 
Because Jesus, when it comes down to it, loved us more than he loved himself. He loved us to sacrifice and lay his life down so that we could experience life with him. And so I wonder what would happen if, for those of us tonight who aren't struggling with our mental health, if we began to look at our friends, our family, even people in your, in your schools, um, on your teams who you know are struggling with their mental health, and ask yourself the question, how can I love this person the way that Jesus has loved me? If you're not struggling tonight, I want to challenge you that your job is to serve. Your job is to serve those who are struggling um, with love. We can talk about serving by loving, but what I want to do is actually talk about it in a way that gives us some practical things that, that we can do. So the first thing that we can do is we can serve by loving with our words. In Proverbs, it talks about how our, our tongue, the words that we use, carry the power of life and death. Like that's, a, that's significant. Your words have power to bring life to any situation that you're in but they also have the power to bring death to whatever situation that you're in. James chapter 3 talks about how our words, our tongue, is like a rudder on a ship. It's so small, but it determines the direction of such a big thing, like the rudder on a ship. Our words have the power to bring life, and your words have the power to carry the, a, a, a miraculous moment of the love of Jesus to somebody close to you who needs it. So, what I want to do, I was going to use a whiteboard, but we have Instagram, so we'll see if it works. Um, I, I want to ask those of you who are watching, those of you who are listening, um, if you're watching on, uh, on YouTube, jump back to Instagram for a second, because I want to ask you guys, what are some ways, what are some things that we can say to show that we're loving? Now, I don't, don't quote scripture, okay? That's not what I'm looking for here. What I'm, what I'm looking for are things like, you know, I'm praying for you, but then actually pray for the person, you know, or maybe you respond with like, ah, man, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like these are, these are simple things and small things that, that we can respond with um, that help the person that we're listening to. They communicate that, hey, I'm not trying to fix what you're going through, but I want you to know that I'm here with you and I love you. So if you're watching on Instagram or you're watching on YouTube, pop over to Instagram. What are some things that we can say? What are some words specifically outside of scripture? Because obviously you can always use that, um, that we can say. And I'm realizing now that Instagram sometimes is slow with comments. So this might not work quite the way that I hoped it would. But I'll take another drink. Okay, so... I probably can't understand what you're going through, but I'd love to try. That's so, that's so good because when we struggle with our mental health, it's so easy to, or w when, we're not, when we're not struggling, it's really easy to, to miss out on what the person who's sharing with us actually wants to say. And communicating that we would love to try and understand means we want them to listen. Another one um, says, thank you for sharing your story with me. That is so powerful. Because when we share what we're struggling with, we're vulnerable. And as the person listening, the person you know hearing the story, um, it's so powerful when they're done sharing to say thank you and let them know how loved they are. Saying you're not alone, that's another big one. We say we're not alone and then we, we prove that by how we, how we act. And I'm going to, um, we're going to talk about that in a second too. Um... Yes, so, so um, Jeremy said we can um, ask people that we encounter about their fears and listen and tell them why you have hope. So good. Um, another thing that you can say, one of the, so Brett Ullman in his talk, he, um, he gives some really great examples of simple things that you can say that, that carry a lot of weight. One of them for Brett is somebody who struggles with his mental health consistently and, and Brett says, the best way to say, how are you doing, is to say, how are you doing today? Because if you struggled with your mental health, you know that that changes every day. That changes often. And so when you say, hey, how are you doing today? You are letting the person be free to just share with you what they're going through. I want to clarify a couple things that we 
shouldn't say. Brett helps us understand in his talk some things that are not helpful to hear when you're the one struggling. So one phrase that you could probably just leave out is everything happens for a reason. And I, it's well-meaning, I get it. But man, when you're, when you're struggling, that doesn't really help because what is the reason that your mind would be tormented? What is the reason that you can't control the thoughts going on in your mind? Another one, um, never, never say this. Never say, is there sin in your life? There's sin in all of our lives, okay? We're humans. Jeez. I'm not perfect. Of course there's sin in my life. Um, another, another good thing that he recommended is to never assume that somebody is just doing better. Never assume health. So if there's somebody in your life you know they struggle, instead of saying, so you're doing better? I, go back to how are you doing today? Because when you ask somebody if they're doing better and they have to respond with no, that that is so discouraging. Another thing that you should just don't don't do is have you tried and fill in the blank. For people that struggle with their mental health on a consistent basis and that have been on a, a long journey, um, they've tried. <laughs> like, have you tried praying? not helpful. I want to just, just run through some of those because they're so easy to work into our everyday life. Um, they're so easy to just kind of roll off the tongue. And some of them are like, you know, Christianese that we would maybe say often, but we can communicate love, this supernatural love of Jesus by the way that we choose our words. And I think that's a really easy way to help those of us who we know are struggling. I'm just making sure I'm hitting all the things that I want to hear. Okay, something else that I wanted to do, and um, we're running out of time, but that's fine. You're you're at your home. You're not sitting in an uncomfortable chair. I'm not worried about it. Um, one of the other things that Brett outlines in his talk that I think are just really simple but really helpful are some things that we can do. We can communicate the love of Jesus through our actions. We can communicate the love of Jesus by the way that we interact with the people in our world, the people that we love and care about. So one, one thing that we can do is to be the one to reach out first. One thing that I'm guilty of because I, whatever, I'm working on it, is I say this, hey, make sure you reach out if you need something. I say that all the time, but... I think it's actually more helpful if we just reach out first and say, hey, how's it going? What can I do for you? I'm here for you. Um, and then sit and listen. Something else that is really helpful is to just sit in the moment when somebody is having a moment where they're, they're experiencing pain and they're emotional and they're not sure what's going on inside of them. Just sit with them. Just sit with them. Be with them and let them know that, that, that you're there. And you may not understand, but you're willing to be there on their journey. Another huge one, just buy people food. Like, you know what your friends like. Don't ask if they want it. They obvi- Man, has anybody ever asked you if you wanted a junior chicken and you didn't? That's never happened. So the people that you know in your life that are struggling with their mental health, if you have time, you know, buy them a junior chicken. Get them some shawarma. Go pick up some pad thai and go over to their house and be with them. Don't ask. Just do it. You would be amazed at how powerful it is when somebody brings you your favorite food um, without you asking. I am Honestly, it feels funny, but I'm convinced that that is actually a moment where the love of Jesus is communicated. And sometimes we miss it because we're looking for these big spiritual things. So these are some things that those of us who are not struggling with our mental health can do. So when you know that there's somebody in your world who is struggling, um, remember, remind yourself of some of these things, what you can say, how you can respond in love, how you can communicate it. Because I'm convinced that um, for those of us that believe that Jesus can do miracles, sometimes we limit him to only doing miracles. And we forget that the love of Jesus in you could be the miracle and the breakthrough that the person next to you actually needs. So 
now I want to talk to you, those of you that are struggling with your mental health. Because it, it, all of us go through it. And when I was really struggling, this verse, um, these couple verses in Hebrews were amazing for me to read. They were powerful um, and it changed the way that I experienced what was going on inside of me. It also changed the way that I looked to Jesus um, in my journey with my mental health. So the verses are from Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse 1 to 3. And it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders in the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorned its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It's so powerful, especially that last phrase. And notice how it doesn't say that Jesus endured the cross so that we would never experience problems. It doesn't say that Jesus endured the cross so that we would never have to make a hard decision. It doesn't say that Jesus endured the cross so that our mind would always work the way it was supposed to. That's not what it says. It says that Jesus endured the cross so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In that moment of pain, in that moment of frustration, Jesus didn't give up on you so that he could give you the power to not give up. I want to say that again. In Jesus' moment of pain, when he laid his life down, he didn't give up on you so that he could give you the power to not give up. And this is so, so important for those of us who struggle with our mental health, because we can look to Jesus and say, Jesus, just take this away. And you know, Jesus said that to God in his moment of pain. And Jesus had to endure. Jesus didn't give up so that he could give us the power not to give up. And that power is the Holy Spirit. That power is God's presence inside of us. That power is the love of God living in you, giving you new life. So if you are a follower of Jesus and you have said yes to life with him, if you have given your life to Jesus, then you have that power. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the, the presence, the tangible love of God so that you don't give up. And I know that that is not easy to hear, but when we let that truth sink deep into our hearts, I am confident that it will make a difference. I'm confident that the Holy Spirit is faithful. I'm confident that he will speak to you in a way that you can have power and strength to hold on to not give up. The other thing, so that, that's for those of us who are struggling, for those of us who aren't, the power of the Holy Spirit in you is to share with those around you. The power of the Holy Spirit in you is to love like Jesus loved. The power of the Holy Spirit in you is the miracle that so many of us are looking for. So when you ask yourself the question, okay, or whenever you ask somebody else, my friend is struggling with their mental health, what do I do? You can love the way that Jesus loved because Jesus did not give up on you so that he could give you the power not to give up. What I was planning to do with our students was to have us get into small groups um, and spend some time to pray for those in our circles who are struggling with their mental health. And so, I mean, I can't, I can't do that with you, um, but what I would love for you to do in your circles at home or um, with your siblings, with your friends, wherever you're watching, would be to take some time once I sign off and pray together. Um, if you're struggling with your mental health, I would encourage you to share that with the people that are around you. Um, because they love you. They're followers of Jesus who are filled with the love of God and they want you to experience that love. So I'm going to pray for you, for all of you, and then I'm going to leave you to um, 
get into, you know, small group. Maybe you've, maybe you've never done this with your family before. And if you haven't, and now you're all awkwardly looking at each other, I would encourage you to do it because I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to move powerfully in your family. He wants to move powerfully in your life. Jesus did not give up on you so that he could give you the power to not give up. God, thank you for our time tonight. Thank you for technology that we could, um, that we could be together, uh, even though we're not together. Thank you that we can hear this word from you. And so I pray now that as students, as parents, as friends, impact leaders are together, and those of us that are watching separately, those of us that are watching um, in homes, God, I ask that your spirit would move, that right now through the silence they would hear your voice, that your presence would be tangible, that they would, that, that for families watching together, that they would feel confidently drawn together by your love. For people that are watching on their own, God, I ask that you would give them the confidence to go and pray with somebody right now. For those that are struggling, God, I ask that you would remind them of your spirit and your presence that's inside of them. And for those that aren't, God, would you so convince them of the power that you've put inside of them to communicate your love to those around them? So as our students, as our parents, as our leaders spend some time now to pray together, Father, I ask that you would speak to them, that you would speak life into their homes, that you would speak hope into their hearts, and that you would speak peace um, as all of us walk through this, this, um, this time that we've never experienced before. God, we're thankful for your goodness, and we're thankful for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for, uh, for joining us to uh, Impact Online. Love it. It was fun. It was weird, um, but it was good. So take some time now to pray with your families. Um, we love you, uh, and we're thankful that you've joined us.